Um, you all brought the blood of Jesus and I brought the sun. Okay? Because we've been praying the rain away. Actually, I've been praying that the rain will go to Mozambique because we desperately need it there now. So, so I brought the sun to New York so that the rain can go to Mozambique. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I have so much to say, but I want to pray again. I pray again. Say, Lord, come, come. Just Lord, come, come. Come this morning. Come and speak to us. Come and speak to our hearts, our minds, our souls, our spirits. Father, just, just take over here this morning. Just take over this morning, this afternoon, this evening. And make your name be known and glorified. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hello. Amen. 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 <clears throat> you may take your seat. Um, what um, Pastor Cheryl said is so true. I feel so at home here. I was trying to put it into words. What I actually feel when I go to Brazil, um, to my home church, where I actually was the very first person to receive Jesus at that church because uh, there were a missionary couple planting the church in my city, and I was the first seed. I was the first person to receive Jesus in that church. So. I know the church, the church knows me, but there is something different about you. Um, I, I don't know, I try, but I can't put into words. And um, I, when I'm lost for words, you know it's a big deal. Because <laughs> people say, it's not true, but people say that I speak a lot. <laughs> I never, I'm like, well, how? I mean, I, not, anyway, so, but before um, anything else, um, I would like to say that um, Sibeni, missionary Sibeni, I was asking her this morning, so what, like, what have you been feeling like here? Because the uh, first day she said she felt she was in a dream, like being here in New York. She said, it just feels like, uh, actually I have a posted a video of her saying that. We took a walk at Long Island over there and then she was like just sharing her heart she didn't know that i was recording her and i was like sneaking like recording her and she was just saying that i feel like i'm in a dream inside of a dream and then this morning i was like okay yes you're inside of a dream but what about now five days after you've been here and and i said well so what other things that you liked most and she said the church the people and and what they do, and she recorded the video. It's a good uh, uh, homework for you to learn Portuguese to see what she's saying in those videos. She said, she posted a video on her Instagram and saying that she recorded a video outside, and then she recorded a video in the warehouse saying, what blesses me the most is not only what goes outside, it's what goes on the inside. It's the work that's been done, that's what you see. Outside, she's saying that in the, her video, like what you see outside is the result of what's been done on the inside. Whew. I'm getting another sermon out of this, I tell you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I just wanted to, to let you know that because she um, won't have all those English words to tell you. So I'm like being her mouth to you right now. So thank you on my behalf, on behalf of Sibeni and on the behalf of our kids. Everything you guys do, you have no idea. Every month, um, Hope, Compass, Cheryl, you send what to you is money, right? But I don't know if you'll ever understand that when that thing that to you is money, to us, is food, is salaries, is provision beyond what I can describe and list here. So what you send from here may be money, but when it reaches us, it's way more than money. It's way more than money can do. And it's love and it's care. And our kids had never had um, toys like they are having now. I hope you started like last year. Uh, and last year, I was so blessed. And I, I am so excited. I cannot wait for Saturday. So we head home. We get home on Thursday. And on Saturday, we, are, we have a Hope Toy Drive. And so I have a quick video to show you the toys that I managed to get with the money you sent. So I want you to see it. Hi there. Open 
I see? I am so excited. Look at this. Look at this. $250. And look at this. Look at this. I'm so excited. Look. All these good cars. And then here, here, look. More cars. Look at these big pickup trucks. And then here. Come on. We have these soldiers, helicopters, and, and these other cars. I am so excited. I just wanted to say a big thank you to Pastor Sharon, Hope and I see for providing this for our kids. And I will surely share with you their faces when we get to see, to give this to them. Thank you. Thank you so much. I feel like I am more excited than the kids, seriously. Like, you have no idea when we give them a soccer ball what it's like. So we, we thought, we're not going to get, because we bought 500 uh, toys, uh, 250 for boys and 250 for girls. And then I thought, I would have bought 250 soccer balls. <laughs> but then we thought it would be too much, but uh, they would, they get, they like everything. They get so, so happy. I just wanted to say a big thank you. Amen. Um, this morning, I, um, the Lord gave me a message that it's boiling inside my heart and I just prayed I have prayed and prayed and prayed and and I still pray Lord let them feel what I feel about this message um, and if you don't feel it if you do not feel this message just go home thinking that this message is my life because if if the Lord doesn't speak to you through this message he has already done a great deal in speaking to my heart so I want to read from Matthew 14, 15 to 21. It says, when evening came, the disciples came to him and said, this is an isolated place and the hour is already late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the village and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here. Can you repeat that with me? We have nothing here. Except five loaves, of, five loaves and two fish. He said, bring them to me. Can you say that with me? Bring them to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And then he took the five loaves and then the two fish. And looking up toward heaven, he blessed and broke the loaves. And then gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the people. And they all ate and were satisfied. Can you say that? They, were, they all ate and were satisfied. They all ate and were satisfied. Amen. They picked up 12 full baskets of the leftover broken pieces. There were about 5,000 men who ate beside women and children. Um, so I, I have so many um, stories that I could tell. Um, I was actually thinking about this message, that, which... By the way, it's a, I will bring a different approach to what you may be accustomed to here. But when I was thinking um, about uh, some stories that go along with this uh, passage, um, th there are many that I could share, but there is one in particular that it's, it fits uh, the, 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 the context of what I want to share. But it, is, it amazes me that it started with Cheryl. This is a story. So um, we, I, we met in 2018, and then early in 2019, she came over to visit Mozambique. And then we had the dream in our hearts to have, uh, to do bags, to, to, to sew, to do something. Um, and, but that was just, just so that people could have an income, an extra, well, an income, because they don't even have an income to have an extra income. So to have an income for, to feed them, themselves and their families. And then Marta, this lady that I sent to a sewing school, was sewing a little bag under the tree. And then I had had that thought. I mean, I thought, well, I can make these bags and then maybe Far Flung, you know, Kyle from Far Flung can take and then sell them in America. Uh, but that was like a like a, a dream, like a like in the back, you know, when you have something in the back of your mind. And then Cheryl comes and says, oh, This is amazing. Let's 
Get, let's make, can she make a lot of them? And, and then I'll, I'll take and my people will buy them. Hallelujah for hopers. Hallelujah. And then she was so excited. I was like, yes, 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 yes. Because she didn't know what was in my heart already. So then we did that and cut the long story short. That year, we made a $1,000 um, profit on, on the bags that she brought and sold to you guys. And we had a big property um, and that I desperately, I felt from the Lord that we needed to put a wall around it. And, but I, I didn't have money because I don't have money. I just have access who, to whom who has money. And so don't, when I need something, I go to him. You will never see me on social media asking for anything because then I go in my back room and I go like, Father. And so I wanted to build that wall so bad because the community was increasing. It still is increasing. More people are coming into the community. And what happens is we have a big property. And then so then they build, they come building, building, building. And then before you know it, they build on your property. Pastor Kurt has probably seen that a lot in Africa. So it's the same you know, throughout the continent. And so I was like desperate. And so then when I had that thousand dollars, I think Ruthie sent uh, from the bags. First thing, you know what I did? I said, okay, so the wall, it's, it's big. Uh, 640 meters wall, whatever that is in, in feet. I started, I got that thousand dollars and I built an L just uh, to buy the house because we have, you will come, you will come. I'm just waiting, I'm just waiting, you'll come. You see, we have now many different buildings in our property, but then we have one in particular that I had a room and I, I was preparing my sermon and then looking out the window and then I had to close the, the curtain because people were like, hello, Pastor Celia, hello, Pastor Celia, hello, Pastor Celia, like 10, 10 times like, hello. <laughs> because it like would distract me so bad because we had no walls and people would come right at, at the window. And so I said, the first thing I will build this L here. <laughs> and so then I did. And it's still there as a witness. So I built, and I'll tell you something to cut a long story short. We never stopped, Kurt, we never stopped the construction of that, of that wall. $20,000 later, plus, because that doesn't even include the gates, 20 plus dollars, thousand dollars later the wall is completely finished yes and I have so many stories uh, like these but this one fits because um, if you forget anything I, I, I said this morning I want you to remember this one thing you can take it as a title of this sermon bring what you have bring what you have and here, I am not only talking about finances and resources. I'll tell you a story of Sibeni, and I, ha I have asked her permission to share, and she gave me the permission. Sibeni is in the spectrum. She is autistic. She, as a child, would hide under the bed if a stranger came to the house. It doesn't, didn't need to be a stranger. As she shares it, even uh, her mom's friends, her dad's friends that came into her house, she would go and hide under the bed. She would go and hide behind the walls, behind the, the walls, yes, behind the doors. And she was like so scared. And back in the day, um, I won't disclose her age, but she's not that young. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> just a joke, just a joke. She's younger than me, okay, okay. I can say that, I can say that. She's younger than me. So then back in the day, there was no, well, I mean, who talked about autism back in like a few years ago? And her mother was so mad and sometimes even spanked her. Like, you're like, you, you're not an animal. Come out, come out. And sometimes it spanked her and she couldn't face the people. And I could say a lot more about that because she shares a lot. Because even her, herself, is amazed at today. Like, she danced in a stage, public stage in New York. Do you understand? 
Do you understand what that really means for an autistic child that hid under the bed, behind the doors, and was so, she shivered when somebody came, and no one understood why. She, in, in the classroom, she would not ask to go to the bathroom because she was so scared of the teacher. She pretended, she says that her whole life she pretended to be normal and fit um, because she only discovered uh, like about two years ago. And then she, her whole life she just tried to fit, to be normal. And then now, finally, she knows that she doesn't need to struggle like to fit anymore. But why am I sharing this story? It's not to embarrass her, it is a testimony, but not only that. I'm sharing that with you because the title of this message is Bring What You Have. Whatever it is, just like the construction of the wall um, back in Mozambique, I brought to the Lord a thousand dollars that I had, knowing well that it couldn't finish that wall. But I am a person, the ones that are like close enough to me know that if I go to a bus stop, I don't wait for the bus. I start walking, sometimes running. The bus will get me on the way. But I don't wait for the provision to start walking into the vision. Because when God gives us the seed, when God gives us the vision, I just run with it. And so for the well-instructed and well-planned people, they have a hard time with me because I'm like, well, I run. I'm a visionary. But it's because I learned how to bring before the Lord what I have. And like in this passage, sometimes we have nothing. Sometimes we do not have anything. But the Lord is asking us, Bring what you have. Just bring what we have. We learn that God sometimes drops a seed, a vision in our heart, like building a wall. Or like in Sibeni, um, put uh, a call in her life, in her heart. And, and she's like, Lord, but how? I can barely stand in front of people. And you have no idea, like in Mozambique, when we do our Children's Day, like we uh, last year had 2,000 kids. And she uh, doing those moves before a crowd of 2,000 kids only, like before a crowd of 2,000 plus people. Because she said yes, she brought to the Lord what she had and God multiplied. That's what I want you to come out with this morning. Draw the Lord, uh, he gives us a vision. He calls us to do something. Even if he doesn't show the end, he, he knows the end. Even if he doesn't show you the map, how to get there. But he already has a map. He already has it figured out. All he wants from us is what we have. And I think I, these days, as this message is boiling inside my heart, I'm thinking about a Trini girl. Right? Somebody that, what did, what did she have? What did you have? It's just a yes. Because when I hear her, her story, I go right to my story. I grew up poor, so she grew up poor. I like I was from I am from one of the poorest states in Brazil, and she's from Trinidad in a very very poor background. She slept in the church, lived in the church, and then I this 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 weekend these days here I'm just thinking, looking at her story and looking at my story, looking at Sibeni's story and thinking, Lord. If people only knew what you can do with one yes, if people only knew. So now you here, many, many of you may never become a pastor. May God, it's not about ministry as official labeled ministry. It's not that I'm saying, oh, give yes to the Lord to be a pastor. Give a yes to the Lord to be a missionary. No, the Lord has put in your heart a seed. The Lord has put in your heart a vision. The Lord has put 
put in your heart something that it was something is holding you back to bring that into passing but what do you have that's the question because many times you can say, I do not have what it takes to be a preacher. I do not have what it takes to be a business person. I do not have what it takes to be a preacher girl. I do not have what it takes to be there, to get there, to be that person. I do not have what it takes. But I want to tell you something. The question from the Lord here is, is not, do you have what it takes so that I can use you? Th th that's not the question that the Lord is asking. The Lord is asking us, what do you have? Yes. Jesus asked, what do you have? And they said, we have nothing except five loaves and two fish. You, your answer to the Lord may be that I have nothing. I just have faith. And the Lord said, bring it to me. Remember what Jesus said? Bring it to me. Bring your yes. Bring your faith. Bring your heart. Bring your life. Bring your self that the Lord can do. You know what the Lord can do? He can make much with little. When I think of Cheryl's story that came to New York with nothing, literally nothing. And then stood on the streets, what are we going to do? And then today, stand in a building that when it was bought, it was worth $4 million. Now I don't even know how much it's worth. And so God can do much with little. He can multiply the five loaves of bread and two fish to a crowd. He can multiply the oil to feed, to save a life of a widow and her son. I tell you that. He can get an uneducated man like a Peter and preach to a crowd. He can get somebody autistic and dance in the stage in New York. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do, can, you grasp, can you grasp that? He can get a vision girl unknown a nobody person from an unknown village back in Bethlehem there and then make her as the mother of the savior of the world do you understand what I'm saying he can get a despised shepherd a forgotten shepherd and turn him into a king he can get a, a now turned into a slave person and make him a governor of Egypt so I do not know what the plan that God has for you is to make you a business person, to make you a, a preacher, to make you a singer, to make you whatever. I do not know. I want you to answer to the Lord, what do you have? Because you may be so far from what the Lord wants to do through you just because of a yes. And I tell you, God's not looking for the ones that are equipped because if, if you had all it takes to be what God wants you to be, you wouldn't be what God wants you to be. Because you would have what it takes. You would not depend on him. So he's looking for the ones that do not have what it takes so that he can make them the person, the people, and make them what he wants them to make them of and use them as he wants to use them. Do you know that people that feel like they have what it takes, they are barely used by God? Because they don't need God. Because they have what it takes. I didn't have what it takes to build a church. We were building a massive building. I, I was talking to Pastor Kurt the other day, making him even going to bed even later than he has already been. Like just talking, talking, talking about that massive building. You know, it's a building that I didn't have what it takes. In, in fact, I didn't even dream about that dream. The Lord showed that to me in a vision and then he gave me the measurements. And I was like, Lord, that's big. Because he gave me the measurements and I myself didn't even believe. No, 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 no. I believe, of course. Uh -huh. So I, I was like, Lord, that is big. A 20 by 40 meters. It's like, to me, it was big. And then the Lord started like bringing what, it, what was needed to build that building and still doing. Hope you, you, you're there too and those bricks and then those plastering on the walls. And so many times throughout the process we ran out of money right and so I think it was last year we ran out of money we didn't have money to do to put to to put the walls up and then pastor Jason 
told her, I just, I don't know, but I just feel from the Lord. I just feel from the Lord. So they sent $1,700 out of nowhere. He didn't know that we had run out of money and the builder was about to stop working. And so he didn't stop working because of that provision. So with that money, we, we closed. We closed. And so then another, uh, this was this year, we uh, got to, to the construction site and then the builder was sitting. And usually, I don't know why, but when I get there, when people are sitting, they keep busy and can start working. I don't know why. I don't know. But so he, he didn't do that. He didn't get up and started working. And I said, um, so you're sitting? Um, he said, Pastor, we have nothing. Oh, we have nothing. And he said, we have, don't have cement, we don't have sand, we, we don't have anything. And then Vicente, our right uh, hand guy there, he said, Pastor, last night I had a dream. And in the dream, someone called you telling you that he was sending a big amount of money. I was like, I take that. And I said, Lord, you see, we, you heard them. We have nothing. But I believe and trust in you. And so the next day, that was a Wednesday afternoon, Thursday afternoon, I did get that phone call. Do you believe it? I got that phone call from a friend, a pastor friend in Ohio. He said, Celia, the Lord's been speaking to me. And he was very honest. He said, I, I have been resisting it for three days because I have other projects from our church that I wanted to invest this money into. But the Lord said, no, this money is supposed to be sent to Celia because she knows what she's going to do with it. And then he said, so I am on my way now to, um, to the bank to deposit this check, $10,000. Do you believe it? So we pushed that construction. I, I, it's the story after story. So I will tell you just one more, just one more. And so we were again, 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 we ran out of money. We needed to do uh, many things. I won't even uh, take your time with that. And so in that construction, and then... A Trini girl had raised here with Hope members $5,000 to push that construction. And so it pushed. And so I, I, don't, I, I have so many stories like this to share with you. I just want you to see one yet, what one yes can do. What do you have? God is an expert of doing much with little in creating something out of nothing so you may say but pastor i do not have money to start the business that's in my heart i do not have the content to teach i feel like i want to teach i want to share the word of god but i don't feel like i have the content to teach i don't have the essence that is required to do this or that i'm not creative enough i'm not um smart enough right but and you can even say pastor yes i can see the promise it, it's it's far but i can see it i can feel it i can even smell the promise i don't know why the lord gave me this line i was like lord smell the promise you know what it means to you because i know that the lord is speaking to somebody because you say lord i can smell the promise I don't know if it has to do with a, a perfume business or not, but I, I know that the Lord said, some of you can smell the promise. And then you go on, I, but I see it, I feel it, I smell it, but Lord, I can also see the impossibility of the promise. I see the improbability of the promise. I see the incapacity of me in the promise, but... I want to invite you to do something. Why don't you take your eyes off the promise? Sometimes we get so locked in the promise 
then we see it so big. It is so big. It is so big that we can't, we, I, it's not going to happen. So take your eyes off of the impossibility, improbability, incapacity, and then put your eyes in the promise. Sir, I don't even know if it's a word in English, but I want to make it up. I want you to put the prom, the, your eyes on the one that made the promise. Because if you get locked up with him, if you, get, if you grab hold of him, and if you go, okay, we do not have anything. We have nothing except, I have nothing, Lord, except myself. You, you, you may look at eyes, you may look at Pastor Cheryl and say, they got it. You may look at me, Pastor, missionary Celia, well, she got it. I tell you, you have no idea. You have no idea because God's promise, I know, I know the God's promise to me is way beyond what I can see as possible. And I told you in the beginning, if, if God doesn't speak to you in this message, he has already spoken to me. Because when we were in the Amazon, I had a big experience. And you can even think about that when you're in a situation like I have been in many times. So we were in, in the, on, on that boat for 10 days. And one day we finished what, whatever we were doing a little earlier. And so then people started like going up on the third foot, the the boat was like three store high. So people would go on the top and then jump into the water. Like kids think, right? Maybe for some of the kids here, they go, wow, 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 yes. And I looked, I was like, gosh, I want to do that. I want to do that. I want to do that. But I didn't have the courage. And then I, I was at the bottom just looking, people having fun, jump, woo, cha, woo, cha. Yeah, and then I was like, I want to do that. I want to do that. So I said, okay, well, I will go up. So I went up, and then I looked as they jumped. I was like, I don't want to do that, but I don't, I don't have the courage. But that experience to me speaks volumes because I closed my eyes, and I jumped off that boat into the water, and I did not die. I'm here. I'm telling you this story. And so every time... Every time I am about even to preach, I just close my eyes and I say, Lord, I will jump off that boat. I will give everything right now. Even this morning as I was sitting there, because you think that people are used to preach. Oh, they're, they're cool. They just go there. No, 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 no. Every time the belly is like, oh, my Lord, it's like, it, it's like cold in the belly. Because it's not about us. It's not about the knowledge. I was saying, Lord, I can have everything written here. But if you do not show up, it does not matter. I never want to speak something out of my own knowledge. Because... I do not have what it takes. I go to him to bring what it takes to speak to your heart. Because it is him that speaks. So every time I need to take a, a step of faith, I, I go back to the Amazon. I go up on the boat. Even Sibeni, because she was so nervous about dancing there, right? And so I said, Sibeni, come here. I want to tell you something. Jump off the boat. And even like when she went up, I whispered, I went there, she said, Benny, remember, jump off the boat. Jump off the boat. So what do you have? What do you have? I don't want to make this too long because it is parade day, right? But I still want to give you five things. Ooh, oh, now she's starting preaching. No, 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 no. I will be quick because I saw five things that these, the disciples did. Five quick things I'll tell you. When Jesus told them, you go feed them. I cannot imagine, like, what would I? Kurt, Kurt, you only have, let's say, 500 toys. And then you have 2,000 people at the gate. And Cheryl says, Kurt, go and give out the gifts. <laughs> Very possible, right? <laughs> true story, true story. 2,000 people standing at the gate and, and she comes to, to the girls and court and say, you guys, what you thinking? Go and tell them, give them the gifts. That's what Jesus did. Go and feed them. And they're like, B but, um, uh, um, pastor, um, even if we had like enough money, where would we get the bread to feed them? I don't know, go and feed them. They listened. 
They may have questioned how, but they listened to what Jesus said. First point, first thing they did, they listened. So whatever the Lord put in your heart to do, listen. Don't doubt because if he's saying, he knows what he is saying. Because you can only see that today, but he can see the end before he spoke. He can see the end before the beginning. So you listen, you pay attention. Because when he says it, when he says build a wall with $1,000, a wall that will cost 20, he knows what he's saying. When he starts a building like that, that by the way, so far we have spent, he has sent $70,000 into that building. How? I do not know. I just listened when he said, build a building 20 by 40. And I was like, that's big, but I listened. So what, whatever the Lord is telling you, he's not asking you, do you have what it takes? He's asking you, what do you have? Bring it to me. Listen to what he's saying. The second thing is to bring what you have. I won't even go into it because they brought what they had. They listened. And they could say, but, and they actually said, we have nothing. But yet, the very nothing that they had, they brought. They had nothing, but they brought. So what do you have? Bring it. Bring it to the Lord. But the third thing they did, they, they, they did. They believed, they listened, they brought what they had, the little they had, the nothing they had. And they believed that Jesus can, could do something with that nothing. And so same thing, you can look at your life and say, who am I? To sing and to have, I don't know what's the good number, uh, Dwayne, for Spotify, for Apple download, I don't know. I was like, million downloads, a million stream. I don't know. You may say, I may never get there. No, 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 bring what you have. Jesus is the king. Let it out, let it out, let it out. You can get there because if you have what it takes, you're not gonna get there because it will be your own strength, your own uh, expertise, knowledge, and talent. But he gets our, our nothing by, but believe. And he does much with it. Obey. Fourth thing. So listen. Bring what you have. Believe. And obey. So they got. The Bible does not say. That the distribution of the bread and the fish. Is started with 12 baskets. Have you ever paid attention to the text? It does not say that it started. With 12 bucket, uh, baskets. It say. Oh my Lord. It says that it ended with 12 buckets, baskets. Could be buckets today. <laughs> so you may start with this five. Just obey and then go to the gate and then give the gifts. So you know what we saw yesterday? Ruthie, what did we see yesterday? Those people, Cheryl was like, we may have to get all the pots and pens from Compass and, and start giving up. We may start, we may need to get our clothes and, and, and our shoes to hand out to the people. Because otherwise they're going to be right because they want the, the toys they have registered and all that. And then you know what happened? Ruthie, what happened? We had leftovers. I kept it. I kept going there. Like, so... The queue, the line was still going around the building. And then I went to the stage and then I looked at his neck and I was like, oh, okay. And then I looked at the line again and then I was like, oh, okay. And at the end, I, I got there and no people in line. I'm like, where, where are the people? <laughs> and toys there. That's what Jesus does. He multiplies. He does much with little, but just obey. And then you start handing out. The hoogettes, the toys, just start handing out. Obey, listen, bring what you have, believe, and obey. Last thing, and then let's go toward the end of the parade. Follow instructions. You can believe as much as you want. You can think you're obeying, 
But if you do not follow the instructions, Jesus said, get them into 50s, group of 50s, and then go and do this and do that and distribute. Learn how to follow the instructions. When we were building that wall, many other needs came up. And usually, when someone, someone donates something, I like to honor what they want us to do with the money. But every time I go, Lord, so put towards the wall, put towards the wall, put towards the wall. And then when we, same story, I could spend the whole day telling stories like this. When we ended, when we finished the money, a, a friend of mine, pastor from South Africa came. And then he said, so how much is to build a section like this? And I calculated, because I didn't even know at the time. I, was, I calculated this much. He said, so I myself will donate to build seven sections. And so he went back to Cape Town, and then he called me, and he said, the men of my church decided to finish the wall in the front. And then a few, two weeks later, he called me and said, another man of my church decided to donate to put the gate. And so you have no idea. Now, the, because... It's, it's so much to share, right? Now we have electricity. But with the coming of the electricity in the community, which is a big, big blessing, also criminality came. And so now we need more than ever that wall. So God can do much with less. Just follow the instructions. Because I could have done many things with that money we, we, we whatever money that we're coming in but the lord's like build the wall build the wall build the wall so f learn how to follow the instructions one time uh this preacher girl here she raised the money for the truck remember the truck the water truck and all together was forty thousand dollars and i was so humbled by it so humbled by it and i remember talking to her and i said thank you so much for doing that and she said, I could have done many things with $40,000, but there was only one thing that the Lord told me to do, to buy a truck. And that truck has been a massive blessing. I tell you, when I say you send money, but to us, when it gets to us, it's not only money. So follow the instructions. Learn how to follow the instructions. You can listen. You can bring what you have. You can obey. You can... Uh, what is the fourth? What is the fourth? You can... Let's, let's do it again because I want you to come out with this. You listen. You bring what you have. You believe. You obey. And you follow the instructions. So what do you have? Bring your little face. Bring your little money. Bring your little plan. You can bring your little pen too. Bring your heart. Bring your willingness. Bring your disposition, your availability, your obedience. Pastor, I, have no, I don't have money. I don't have a plan. I sometimes find myself doubting that I even have heard it right because I have no faith. And I, I'll end with this. Okay, you have none of these. None of these. But what do you have? Bring yourself. And bring yourself to the altar this morning. And that's what we're going to go now, to the altar. And say, Jesus, I want to listen. Or you may have already listened to what he said. Believe. Obey. Bring that little thing you have or the nothing you have. Bring yourself. Let's stand up. And if you feel like this word is for you as much as it is for me, bring your autistic self. You see what can, God can do with an autistic person that the world now doubt? Can they, can they be anything? Can they be a missionary? Can they be a singer if they hide behind doors? Well, now you know God can do that. God can do what to men is impossible. I am a living testimony of that. A poor girl. Back in Paraíba, Campina Grande, I am here now just because of a yes, 
Si Benny is here now just because of a yes. Your Trini Pastor is here just because of a yes. It's not because we have what it takes. It is because the Lord takes what he doesn't exist and turns into existence, into his plans. He makes us to be what he planned us to be. He makes us do what he planned us to do. Because if we did have what it takes, we would not be here. Bring yourself to the altar. You have the opportunity now to come before the Lord and say, yeah, I say yes, Lord. I listen to you. I bring myself. I obey. I obey you. I follow the instructions. Come to the altar. Before the Lord. Oh, Jesus, 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 take it, take Jesus, take Jesus, take what we bring, take what we bring this morning because each of us here has a journey, each of us has a story, each of us has a process, Father, but you know it too well, bring what you have to the altar. God is a God of fulfilled promises. God is a God that finishes what He starts. If He gave you a vision, He planted a seed inside of your heart. If, if He called you to do something, if he has planted a desire inside of your heart, then he is the one that brings it to pass. Just do your part in it. Bring what you have. Pray your prayer and we will go on and then pray for you and with you. But pray your own prayer and then do bring to the Lord what you have, yourself, your soul, your mind, your heart, your voice, your little finances, your dream, your plan, your blueprint. Just present it before the altar of the Lord. Say, Lord, this is the nothing I have, but I bring it to you. In any area, you can do that. All areas, ministry, finances, um, profession, uh, anything. You want to be a teacher. You want that job and then you feel like I do not fit the description of the job. Well, bring what you have and he will make you fit the description. He will even open up the door for the job. Bring what you have. We will be, we will go around and pray for you as you bring it to the altar. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away so you can use me. Here I am. Here I stand. Lord. 